welcome back to my channel. So I have a very special guest today. Let's just go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell them your name, how old you are, and what kind of transplant you received. Gotcha. So what's up, everybody? My name is Daniel Obregon. I am 21 years old, but um, yeah, I had a liver transplant, and it's dope. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know being on my channel this is super duper exciting Hopefully yeah thank you for the invite to um get other people on here our transplant friends um on here eventually i do want to make i mean this whole point of my youtube channel is to share my journey um and hopefully someone who had just received a transplant or someone who's struggling you know, with their transplant journey that hopefully they find this and that, you know, they're not the only one. Like we're going through the same thing that they are right now. And hopefully this gives them courage, gives them hope and, you know, all the positivity in the right. world. Um, so the first here is a program um, here in Dallas, Texas um, at the Children's Hospital called Camp SOAR. Uh, SOAR meaning some organ so okay. assembly assembly required, required. <laughs> it's been a while there you go. um and so actually me and a couple other friends have been in that camp for a, a while and usually the camp is composed of okay correct me if i'm wrong i think it's like the youngest is like 11 or or 12 13 maybe and then by the time like you graduate, like you're already 17, 18, right? I believe. Yes, by the time you graduate high school. Well, yeah, that's how we met. I met, um, we met each other through camp store. Just, it's really composed of like different transplants, not only liver, but kidney, heart, intestine, like any type of transplant you can think of. That's where, you know, we come together, we meet new people, we connect, and it's, it's just so much fun. And it's usually during the weekend, I believe during April, I believe, somewhere around there sometimes. Yeah, it's like April or March. March, yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's it, it was always that time of year that, you know, got to see each other, get, you know, catch up. And it was just like so much fun. We had different activities um, each weekend. Oh, I, you know, I never had any, any problems. You know, I didn't have any health problems going up, growing up or... Um, you know, any issues or family background history. Being an athlete, uh, have been, still, uh, you know, still am, and, uh, you know, always focus on my health. You know, I never, I mean, never drank, never really drank. I, sure, I may, might have two beers, but that's probably about it. Uh -huh. uh, not intentionally. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, you're, yeah. Uh, but, you know, didn't didn't really drink, never smoked, never did drugs, never did right. anything anything that will compromise my health and my performance of my sport. Mm -hmm. um, you know, came here, became number three in the state of Texas for BMX racing. Uh, was about to go to um, to this huge national event, and you know, just preparing myself for it. And one day, it was Columbus Day actually. I went for I started going with my mom because she was pregnant with my uh, uh, my little brother. Mm -hmm. So you know, super excited about that, and I started feeling like like I was gonna get sick. You know that feeling whenever you're like, oh man, like I feel I'm gonna yeah. get like the flu or something. So it was like that, and then Tuesday it hit me like really hard. You know, I was like, you know, coughing and. And I just like start feeling bad, and mm. by the time it was like the what like night, I had to go to care now because I I was running like really high fever and um you're just feeling horrible. Like I was like, man, what the freak is this? Right, right. And, and I got a shot. They told me, oh, you have like bronchitis or whatever. I'm like, okay, oh well, God. I got my PSAT tomorrow. I can't miss that. So went ahead and went to school and like right before uh, right before I went to school, I had to get a calculator because I didn't have a calculator. So we went to Walmart and I could barely like stand. Like I was shaking, mm -hmm. I was sweating, mm -hmm. uh, like I had 
blurry vision. It was just, it was just crazy. Like I didn't know what it, what it was. So I went uh, to school and, you know, I ate my lunch and did my PSAT and felt like a little better, but not really much. All right. And then when I got home, dude, that subway just like went in one way, went out the same way it came in. <laughs> I mean, threw it all up. It was Oh my horrible. gosh. Yeah. And I laid down, like take a nap or something because I was just feeling so bad. Mm -hmm. and then uh, I just remember waking up like a week and a half later in a hospital bed oh. and I was like what is going on you know mm -hmm. like everything happened so fast you know I didn't have a mm -hmm. warning or anything like that so for the next two days I was awake but I wasn't conscious so you know wasn't being myself I can't remember a thing Oh, uh, you know, it's like acting weird, like, you know, like if I needed anger management or something, like oh. my mom was telling me, I was like, you know, just not talking appropriately. Mm. <laughs> like it was, it was just a lot of stuff and like, yeah. yeah, it was, it was just hard for them. And like me waking up and, you know, figuring stuff out and then later on, like knowing what I know now makes me makes me feel so grateful it makes me like you know just appreciate life yeah. much more than I did before because I mean you never know whenever you're gonna go to sleep and wake up like where are you gonna wake up are you gonna wake up or not or yeah go bed or where you know so it's like often we just take that going to sleep granted mm -hmm. like oh we're just going to sleep and just, tomorrow's another day and like, I'm just going to do the same thing or, like, I'm not going to change anything or, you know, it's like, we forget what we focus or focus in life is and forget to appreciate those beautiful moments that life gives us. Yeah, I so, agree. I totally agree. So I was, um, I was 16. Okay. Yeah, I got my transplant October 20th of 2015. So. oh okay so you basically you were a teenager so yeah you yeah. know being transplanted as a teenager you know once you turn 13 and you know those like teenage years which can be a little bit rough um <laughs> and especially I mean now you know you're a young adult but you know let's go back to those teenagers like how how did that like affect you you know in school and what you know in emotionally mentally you know physically and like you said being an athlete like that must have taken a toll at you you know toll at you like you couldn't you know I'm guessing that you know you weren't able to do as much as you can you know from the start you know what I mean trying to get back yeah. up and trying to you know do whatever you wanted to do yeah so I think one of the one of the biggest things was I I always I I'm the type of person that don't like when you tell me to do something. Mm. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was like they were they were like oh no like you know you you can't be riding your bike or like you, mm -hmm. you may never be able to race again. You, yeah. Like forget about soccer. That's a contact sport. You can't do contact sports. Yeah. And all of this stuff. I'm like, you know what? Screw that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I agree. <laughs> a, month, a month after my transplant, it was like the first week that I got home, I was riding my bicycle down the street. Oh, and I remember oh, my, my, gr my grandma, my grandma was there and she she was there she took cool pictures she took a video my mom got so pissed when she saw that yeah she was like why are you in the street like why are you <laughs> like right your back i'm like because like why not right mm -hmm. and so you know it was like a huge deal like why you shouldn't be doing that and everything but you know i was like but why you know it's like i feel i feel good like i feel fine <laughs> but I wasn't really fine, you know. I I just had an organ transplant. I did. I it took me years, and I'm right. still learning how to deal with it because, you know, it's it's so it's new. You know, it's, you mm -hmm. don't. I didn't grow up with this, or uh, yeah. 
you know, like I had to accommodate and like to work my life around mm-hmm. these. Uh, I wouldn't call it an issue because be- I'm alive, you mm-hmm. know, like if I wasn't because of this transplant, I wouldn't be here. Right. So it's like, it's just being like grateful for it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, acknowledging that I can't do, uh, you know, I can't perform as high as I was before, you know. Right. Um, and if I can, you know, it's, it's going to take time. And it was understanding that because, you know, I went back to BMX and I got really frustrated. You know, I, I felt like my dream of becoming pro and everything just went to the trash with transplant mm-hmm. because my stamina wasn't the same. Uh, you know, my, my performance wasn't the same. And it was just a lot on that aspect. So working around with that and understanding my limits, I think was key for me to, um, to advance, but also, you know, the, you mentioned the emotionally and mentally, you know, mm-hmm. mental health is a real issue and yeah. emotional health is as well. You know, it's a correlation with it. Mm-hmm. So to me, my faith was what held me down on it. And it still is to this day. Yeah. You know, we take these like pretty weird medicine that can have a bunch of side effects. You know, it's like there is, you only take it for one thing, but there's like 12 side effects that right. just come with it. <laughs> like to me, the hardest one is like the reflex. Like I hate it because I eat something and it's like always in my throat. Like I can just always feel it. So, but also like, you know, the mood swings, you know, still oh, getting used yeah. to that. Like that's, that's something that is just crazy. When my fiance says, well, you need to work in your mood swings. I'm like, trust me, I have been trying. <laughs> I've been trying because it's, I mean, it's hard. You know, I don't give it, con- I don't let a medicine control me but at the same time it's acknowledging that there is that aspect and that there is uh, there is a vulnerability in that sense yeah i'm sort of helped me a lot with the emotional part of it the you know mental part of it like you said it's it correlates with each other mm-hmm. so um i mean and the fact that, you know, technically almost grew up with it, um, having it at nine months old, um, barely, you know, one, um, to finally have, and I believe also, you know, the people that you surround yourself with um, mm-hmm. really helps too, um, in addition, you know, to what, to whatever your religion is, to what, you know, whatever helps you, but for me, I think personally, it was just more surrounding myself with, with good friends, um, good, you know, family members, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah. Uh, um, I think, you know, I tried always uh, surrounding myself with people that uh, would be truthful in mm-hmm. that, um, you know, I don't just call friends to anybody. Like, if I call mm-hmm. you my friends, because like, yeah. Yeah, I know you're a real one. So, Mm -hmm. like, you know, they were very understanding and they were super supportive and, you know, looking out for me. And, uh, but there was also the people that, you know, it's like, oh, I forgot. Or like, oh, yeah. Oh, what do you mean you have a transplant? What does that mean? It's like, you know, and and it's like that. And, uh, you know, I never really felt like shamed about it. I Mm -hmm. felt that if I was alive to me, that was everything. You know, I don't have to be ashamed of what I went through and ashamed of uh, having an organ transplant because there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it's a blessing. And, you know, navigating those teenage years, as you said, that they're like, yuck. (laughs) I mean, medicine doesn't help. You know, steroids mess your whole hormones up. (laughs) The pimp, like, you hit puberty, you're in your teenagers years, and you have pimples. Well, with st- with uh, the stairs, they like oh my triple. It's yeah. just insane, and it sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you get the puffy face, and it's just uh, it just sucks. 
But I think to me, one of the things that, um, that I guess gave me a little bit of, uh, like a little bit of shame maybe mm-hmm. was like that, the shaking, you know, uh, the medicine to me made me shake a lot. Mm-hmm. So when I will try to eat, like I remember me uh, sitting down the first week that I was back in school, sitting down with a couple of my friends and, you know, they were asking me questions and everything. I was trying to eat my rice with a fork. And I remember picking up this big chunk of ice. And when I put it in my mouth, there was like two grains of rice in it because I was shaking so much mm-hmm. that I couldn't like keep it. So it's like to them, that was like a wake up of like, wow, like this, you know, he went through something, mm-hmm. you know. But at the same time, to me, it was like, man, like this is going to be a process. Yeah, and yeah. Acknowledging that it was not just jumping back into my reality, back how it was. It was more of like adapting. You know? Right, and, right. And I... Yeah, I mean, till till this day, you know, I still get like, you know, some of my friends is like, oh, uh, like I have my bachelor's party uh, coming up, and they're like, I just was like, I remember like can drink kind of anything. Like, yeah, I can drink. It's like ah oh, right, so it's it's so yeah. it's like that type of stuff. It is, it is, you know. It's like I'm cool without it, but at the same mm-hmm. time, it's like sure, I would love to take a drink with my boys. I mean, it's not like we're gonna just get wasted or anything, but you know, can't even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Right, so, right. So yeah, it's it's a it's a process, and it, it will always be a process. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean the. Being trans, you know, planet will always be, a, like you mentioned, like you just said, is always a process. But I think there are some parts in the process that where you s- start acknowledging it, you start accepting it a little bit more. Um, for for me, you know, there, I I believe for me, I always had a love hate relationship. <laughs> Yeah. transplant like in like in elementary school it was like I guess I didn't really had a concept of it I just knew oh my liver is like different or I know I just had a surgery I have a big scar you know big scar on my you know tummy um mm-hmm. you know I always knew that you know I was different not different unique from other kids yeah. um, so <laughs> So, um, so yeah, it was just like, it was kind of like an eh, and then middle school comes along, and I, you know, I did athletics, and so the thing was, is that, you know, we, good thing I, like, I had athletics, like, I believe in seventh grade, like, we had athletics, like, first thing in the morning, so we'd always be, like, in our, like, uniform, but then after, we would change, and so, like, there's some girls that'd be, like, go to the bathroom and change, but no, like, for me, I just did not care. <laughs> So, like, I had a couple of, like, that incident a couple of times where girls would be like, oh, what happened to your tummy? And I'd be like, oh, I got a liver transplant, you know? So, mm-hmm. again, it was more of, like, I don't care that you know because I only see you, like, once a day or you're not really in my class or, like, you mentioned, like, you're not really, like, a front friend. You're just, like, that sounds so mean, but it's so true. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I mean, it's you're true. You're just, like, a yeah. classmate. I don't really care, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then eventually when, uh, we might get into this next, but eventually where that hate starts to come along and I'm still kind of, it's gotten better. Like my, mm. my mentality for it has gotten better, but where that hate, the, the you know, hate relation starts to come in is when, you know, hmm. Like middle school terms, like when the boys like start to come in and like you gotcha. know, I start getting self-conscious. I was like, oh my goodness, what are they gonna think of me? I was like, scar, mm-hmm. you know. And during that time, I believe I had let's see, because I had like many rejections, unfortunately, which is not mm-hmm. um not something that all of us, you know, all of us transplants aim for having zero rejections. Mm-hmm. Um but I had many in my life so far, and I had one probably eighth, ninth grade year, 
So that's when, like, again, like you mentioned, and it's for those who don't know, steroids, not the ones like athletes use illegally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> steroids in this concept is like a whole different thing. Yeah. Like Daniel mentioned, like the side effects, like your face gets like really puffy and like, I don't know for you, but I got like hungry 25-8. Like we would eat Dude, like, like a big meal word. and I get like hungry again. Yeah. What else? I remember like, after the transplant. were pretty bad. Yeah, after the transplant, I was like, <laughs> I couldn't stop eating. Like they, yeah. they no, they gave me on top of that medicine to, to like open my appetite. I'm like, mm. do not give me that. That's a bad idea. You know, I've always eaten a lot. And so now <laughs> it was like, my mom had to hide fruit from me because really? I was eating yeah. everything that came my way. So, oh my God. Yeah, it was crazy. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, that's when the, the hate relationship part came along. And then I was like, and then I was like, oh, so I started getting self-conscious basically. Yeah. And then high school hits and I'm just like, ah, oh, I don't really care anymore. Who, you know, who knows? Like my friends who are friends know what's up, you know? And then there's like, it's like basically friends, friends versus like classmates at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just blurted it out as if it was like nothing. And then... Let's see, uh, end of high school, starting college. And that's when I started to get more self-conscious again. Mm. And it, again, it was just like a battle between, you know, that, again, that love-hate relationship. And then bring it to now, recent years, I think it's now I'm accepting it more, a little bit more, still a little bit self-conscious, but it's yeah. not as much, you know, growing up in middle school, high school. I mean... If people find out, people find out. If they want to ask, you know, it's again, it's nothing to be ashamed of at this point. It is what it is. I mean, yeah. like you said, I mean, if, if if it weren't for the transplant, like we wouldn't be here. You know, there's a reason, you know, why we're here. Yeah. And we're gonna right. have to figure that out for ourselves. Right. Yeah. So oh yeah. Um you're engaged. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> Oh no, I was all full on. I was like, hey, I had their just said. Really? <laughs> it was, yeah. That's I mean, good, because was... I would have been like, Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I feel on. that, like, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, yeah, I mean, if people ask me, like, hey, uh, well, I want to know more about you, or like, tell me more about you. And that's the first thing I'm from, like, well, if you insist, I have a little transplant, you know? Oh. And it's like, oh, what do you mean? Like, yeah. how does that work? And <laughs> like, there's the people that think a liver is a kidney. And oh. it's like, no, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's an, it's an interesting, it gets interesting. You know, I think it spices it up the conversation. Mm -hmm, I uh, bet. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, it's like, ah, oh, so you have a scar. Like, can we see the scar? You know, mm -hmm. I think like that's something I have to get used to. Is like people asking for, ah, right, can we see your scar? Oh, you know, especially like as a guy, you know, it was like, yeah, I want to hear me, yeah. me, oh like, I mean, sure, like whatever is whatever, but yeah. like sometimes it felt like I was like some sort of like specimen that people wanted to look at, you oh. know. Because it's like this car. So I was like, I don't know. It, it felt weird, like, just like, oh, yeah, like, here's my scar, you know, lifting on my shirt. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Oh, I low key feel like naked a little bit, you know? <laughs> it's like my identity yeah. just like, yeah, out there. So I think that was one of the, one of the interesting parts about it. And, um, but when people, like, there's the people that just wanna see, just to say, oh, like, like I saw this guy's like, car, like, or, curious. yeah, they're just curious, and then there's the people that actually want to know, you know, like, mm -hmm. what's behind it, and the story, and everything, and I remember that was the, that was the one thing, like, one of the many things now, but really the main thing that made me fell in love with, with my fiance now, mm -hmm. you know, it was, like, our first date was, not intentional at all i mean we were gonna go play volleyball with a couple of friends and none of them showed up so we're like well let's just uh go go to lunch and we'll go play volleyball like 
Christian and she's like, oh, well, do you do you not care if it's just two people? I'm like, no, like whatever. I mean, that was the whole plan for me today. So mm-hmm. whatever. So we went out for lunch and, you know, start talking to each other like about ourselves and, you know, told her my story and everything. She, she just like, she just like started bro- breaking. Like she oh. just broke. And I was like, man, this girl is for real. Oh. You know? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was, so I, yeah, I just held on to that. And, you know, here we are now about to yeah. get so it's, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I feel like it's part of the story and you need to tell that story. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just tell her like you know answering those questions is not a not a burden to me if if you will yeah i agree yeah. Okay. oh well oh, so cute <laughs> <laughs> but like i said like we have mentioned before congratulations though thank you thank um, you engagement um well how you know since you touched on the whole uh like being rejected by people and being uh like you know as a as a as a girl as a woman mm. you know i know that it, it hits harder you know because there is more to it you know there's more issues like there is the the physical appearance issue then there is the you know the ana- anatomy issue you yeah know, the, when it when it comes to think about starting a family like there's oh. more to it yeah you know it's like like what what is some of that stuff that uh, that affects you, you know, like mm, okay. So in terms so like I believe it's not just only one, but you know, I think people do forget that boys, men, grown men, young men, that they also are self-conscious when it comes to, you know, physically too. Um, mm. but you know, with especially you know someone who has a transplant like it's it's pretty obvious like it's not small. oh yeah <laughs> like you, get, you definitely get looks when you yeah, go out like, to a pool or something it's, yeah like, it's basically an elephant in the room but for me I have been taking this um other anti-rejection medicine besides prograf um mm. the generic sacrolimus but the other one I've been taking, I've been taking it for a while, and that's the only medication for me that's preventing me to carry children, if that makes sense. So, um, carry, I love that term. <laughs> <laughs> so carry children. Like, you're a spaceship, you're just carrying children. <laughs> Like anatomically, like I can, like I have no problem, but I think it's just like, like whenever I go to like the annual like appointments for um, Mm. my liver doctor, but also for, you know, your PCP, your primary care physician, um, you know, they have told me, you know, asked me multiple times, like, oh, do you plan, you know, getting pregnant anytime soon? I was like, no. Um, so I was like, no, no, thank no. You. <laughs> but they were like, um, especially liver. Um, you know, he's told he's told me, he, or the nurses and you know the the doctor, you know, have told me multiple times. You know, you know, you can't get pregnant because of this medication. Um, if you are planning to, um, you know, you gotta talk to us first so that we can switch out your medication, or you know, mm-hmm. um, what else? Or if you going to become sexually active then you gotta let us know so we can put you on birth control um so yeah. Yeah, that that's one that you know that kind of hits home for me so i do really love kids especially like babies and the younger ones yeah, that one kind of hits me you know a little bit harder than the, the physical i guess mm. um that one i mean i'm just gonna have to deal with it that's i mean yeah yeah you know yeah yeah for so. sure so how have you dealt with the, you know, with the scar? Like, you know, like I know that y- you are at a better point now. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen that. But like, how, how have you dealt with that? Like before? Yeah. In the past? Um, hmm. 
like like I mentioned, like in elementary school, I feel like I think in in terms of like saying that I have a transplant, I don't I don't think I had a problem. Again, I don't I didn't think I had the concept of what it was. Mm-hmm. But in terms of showing it, I I believe that I was like <laughs> no. Um, yeah. <laughs> And then in middle school, like I said, in athletics, we would just like change like in front of each other. And that I think there was some points, you know, during in middle school where, you know, I did really, you know, I was like, no looky. Um, <laughs> mm. it was like, you know, I'll go to the, you know, bathroom or, you know, bathroom stall and change there or whatever. Mm. Um, high school, I think. I feel, I feel like high school, I want to say that I was, you know, Back at that like phase of like, oh, I don't care anymore. Nah. But in reality, you know, that's um high school especially is where, you know, the self-image, self-conscious thing comes into play a little bit more. Um but I still, yeah. So that I feel like in high school it was more of like, no, like I'm only wearing yeah. like one piece bathing suit, whatever. And now it's just like like when people like look at me or do a double take, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah, um, if they're gonna look, they're gonna look, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a, yeah, I mean, that's for me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I know for for me, is is inter- it's funny because it's, it is, it, funny. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, you, like you do get like those double stares, like people scan you mm-hmm. a little bit. Like I remember this, I was uh, playing basketball one day with a couple of my friends, and um, and one of the kids was like, "Hey, uh, like what ha- what happened to your stomach?" Mm-hmm. It is like, oh, uh, I had a little transplant. Like, yeah. you know, like just like su- just like super chill. Yeah. And, uh, but it was like, oh. What is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So it's like, mean. yeah, it's like a little awkward, but, you know, it's like, it's whatever. Um, but another funny thing is, you know, I, I was like, you know, again, I was super athletic and still I am and everything. And, you know, I always prided myself on like my, the shape that I was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like the six pack and everything. Right. But now it's like, I can't grow one of them, so I have a five pack instead of a six pack. Oh, really? It's like super weird. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I can't grow that one part because when that they was... cut it, I yeah they cut it, they cut everything. So it's like I, I don't know what they cut. It just it just doesn't it just yeah. stays flat. So it's that's pretty weird. Yeah. I've always wondered about that. Like us, like you know, you know. If, if any of us wanted to become, you know, like really in shape, like really become serious, like how would, like, affect us? How would it look? I so mean, you're still I able think... to like have abs, though, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah, you are. You know, it's like you might, you know, they might not look, uh, like, you know, like your normal abs that are like symmetrical or whatever, yeah. but. I mean, you will have abs. Like, you will have it abs. is possible. Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's not. Possible. It's not like it's not impossible. It's not like a like a black magic thing. You know, it's, <laughs> it's there. It's there. Like it is possible. It's just you yeah. know, it takes the work and it takes the the dedication and maybe it takes a little bit more of work because yeah. you know we we got cut. Mm-hmm. You know, we got sly stuff and everything so yeah yeah so it does take a little bit more of work and i have noticed that you know to mm. uh takes a little bit more of work to keep in shape and to um to grow that you know yeah. get like toned and everything but i mean other than that like yeah, yeah it's always- just good eating and exercising yeah i've always wondered about that low-key <laughs> yeah because <laughs> so, like you said it's like cut like dead ass excuse me in the middle so it's like and that's where like abs kind of form so yeah like what <laughs> right so you have a five pack yeah. hey that's unique though hey i mean come on who has a five pack 
<laughs> exactly. Who has a five pack? Like, let me know. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. That's so funny. But yeah. yeah. Well, you did mention something um, about the boys. Mm. Like, how is that? Like, like how is that for you? Like, does your transplant get like a turn off or something? Like, here's the thing. So, growing up, I was not allowed to date. Um, yeah. You know, elementary school, it's like you don't need to worry about it. But I worry. Yeah, for sure. What the heck? But anyway, you know, I was not allowed to date, and so um, when it comes to like you know, boys that are my friends, if that makes sense. Like, that I would not care about. I'd be like, mm, I don't want to transplant. Mm. But yeah. when it came to, like, you know, boys, you know, I had a crush on or, like, you know, I really, really, you know, yeah, had a crush on, then I wouldn't tell. Yeah. Um, but, you know, college comes around and it's like, you know, I never really had, like, the green light to, like, date I guess but like at the same time you know dating is not really it wasn't really a priority and it just mm -hmm. you know just naturally through college and you know high school college um you know it was just it was like never on my mind if that makes sense and you know in college yes I did have you know those thoughts where I was like especially you know beginning of you know college like the first two years maybe a year and a half um you know like oh it'd be nice to have a boy you know no boyfriends but yeah. um but no I mean like it's and then you know in the junior sophomore through you know senior year of college it was the, like you know I I you know have good friends around me I have my family mm -hmm. and that's all you know I just need to graduate at that point <laughs> and yeah. it, like I said it's just it, it was like one of those things that just it was never a priority and you know I you know 23 and going you know still single and it's just like nah you know but you know yeah. when when that time comes you know when I find that somebody I I always like I don't know I always like have these like imaginations or whatever of yeah. like me not you know I don't know I I don't know why I would not have the courage to, you know, tell that, you know, tell that person, you know, one interesting fact and that interesting fact is not me having, me having a transplant. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's just that I think the fear of being, it being a turnoff, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be. I mean, I've been told like multiple times and some of my close friends have known this, how my girlfriends know about this. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're like, you know, if it's a turn off, then they're not really the one for you, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. But it's just one of those, you know, irrational fears that I have, you know, yeah. when that time comes. Um, but yeah, and, you know, like for you, I wonder how, like, did you... When you when you told you know your fiance that you had a transplant or even before, um, when you you know started you know developing that crush little feeling, like were you like did you have any like fears like that or were you just kind of like, you know if she thinks this is a turn off then, and ain't it like she like she's not it you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean definitely you know to me, you know I'm not I'm not so much uh about like the physical aspect mm. uh you know like yes i i love staying in shape and you know doing all that but you know i i want to look at a person first because of who they are as a person mm -hmm. and what's in their heart it was more like i mean if she like if she likes it then cool if not then we got issues you know because i can't change that yeah um, so yeah i mean yeah for sure yeah. it's also like i you know like you said it's for you it wasn't more the physical aspects which i think for me i think that's my rational fear is the physical aspect of it and also a little bit of it's also because of you know 
I have been, you know, still living in my parents' house, which is that okay? Because like, I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of us are Asian still are. Um, but low key have been, you know, very dependent, you know, on my parents in a way, you know, yeah. for example, my insurance that I have is um so with my mom's like I'm under my mom's insurance and so then by the time like I'm I'm able to stay on my mom's insurance on 26 so mm -hmm. I mean that's you know I I also have that fear of like you know oh my goodness like uh, I have that fear of like them perceiving me as not being independent if that makes sense mm -hmm. two major ones so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the whole insurance thing is definitely a factor, you know, that is a uh, little nerve-wracking because, you know, it's, stuff is expensive, you know. Medicine is super expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I pay for my medicine. I pay for my appointments, you know. Like, I became... Independent. Yeah, independent. Now, <laughs> when it comes... Like, I'm still under my parents' insurance, right? Yeah. Like, that's... Even though I pay everything, like that's the one thing that they still pay for me because, right? I mean, with this type of stuff, you know, you need to have a really good insurance. Yeah. And if anything happens, it's gonna be freaking expensive. So it's like I can't afford that yet. Yeah. So it definitely is a factor. I mean, because you know, unfortunately, we live in a in a country where pharmaceuticals. You know, companies, they just jack up the prices whenever they want, you know, mm -hmm. because they know people need this medicine. Yeah. And it's, it sucks. I mean, it's not more, like, right in many senses, especially in, like, a moral sense. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's, like, one thing that you have to deal with it. Right, so, right. Mm -hmm. That's definitely an, an issue, but... Yeah. yeah. But I do make my own appointments, though, so... There you go. Good job. <laughs> To make my own appointments. <laughs> it's it's uh, the little steps. It's yeah, the little steps. honestly, honestly, 20, 21, 23 week. Uh, <laughs> Think of one step at a time. Um. Oh. Oh. Uh, so what are you? How many medications are are you taking right now? Uh, just the program. Just so the program. I, Good. Yeah. So I take four uh, milligrams in the morning and four at night. Every day. That's good. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's always that's always our ideal goal is to stick with at least one, and that's you know just prograph for if you can't yeah. you know um, afford that tacrolimus, which is mine. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do attract tacrolimus too because it's much more cheaper. <laughs> yeah, so that's always our goal. Transplants is to keep with that one. That's the one major anti-rejection um, mm. medicine, and you know, keep off the the steroids. Yeah. So nice talking to you again after a while. Um, yeah, it was. I want to see more videos of me talking with my transplant plans. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Um, also hit that red or that red subscribe button so you get my videos every Saturday. Hit that, and also hit that notification bell so you get um notification every time I upload my videos and I'm still keeping up with Saturdays um but yeah and I hope to see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>